Okay, this video is going to show how to save games in RetroPie 2.3 and specifically when you're using RetroArch as the emulator so that kick in when you're running systems like Mega Drive, Master System, SNES, NES, those sorts and it's all managed within the RetroArch.cfg and generally within the RetroArch but lots of people with a Raspberry Pi running RetroPie and want to make sure that you can save games when you're playing those so this is going to be split into two videos the first one is how you do it internally like you were playing on the original hardware so if you were going to manually choose a save slot or your game always saves your scores or your lap times or whatever when you're playing it and the second video focuses more on how RetroArch can separately grab a snapshot of the game outside of the sort of game's awareness so this first one um, running F0 at the moment you can see um, on the title screen here there are three options We've got uh, Grand Prix, Practice and Records and when you fire this up for the first time you only get the Grand Prix option and Practice and Records isn't there. The reason Records is shown at the moment is because it's loaded or it's saved previously and now it's loaded the in-game file and that is a .srm file and you can see these appear on your RetroPie when you play um, games and then quit out. The reasons that it might not save this properly are if it doesn't have permissions to write the file. So when the RetroArch runs, it runs as user pi, and if your folder is owned by the user root, it might not be able to write back in there. So as long as it's got write access, it should create these .srm files when you quit out of the game. So if I was to quit out of this with my hotkey and go back to Emulation Station, that would exit cleanly and it would write a .srm file. And I'll show those appearing at the end of the video where you can see how they're written. Separately, there's a configuration option which we'll look at in a minute, which shows that rather than only saving an SRM file at the end when you quit, it can save a few seconds after the game updates it. So as you run through it, as you play in the game, now and again, depending on if you choose a save slot, like when you're in Zelda or something, and you choose a save slot to save into, the game itself manages a, um, the that save in a memory area and then it's saved out in a .srm file so you can say you want to save that every few seconds and that file will get written more regularly to the SD card as opposed to just at the end. And as far as I can see there's no option to stop that SRM file being saved when you quit cleanly so when you go back properly to emulation station usually using a hotkey or hitting escape on the keyboard where it cleanly goes back and there's not an option to stop that automatically loading because usually if you're using the original hardware you'd want, that would be what happens anyway it always remembers what it saves on its um, it would have been in the cartridge or a certain memory area in the cartridge it would always load that anyway so if you really wanted to wipe all your high scores you just go into the file structure uh, that I'll show at the end and you delete the .srm file and then it would forget them all so it's inherently already there and by default it should work so you can see on the screen now I've got a records option and based on this SRM file you can see that um, it's remembered on the Mute City 1 option here. I've got a couple of lap times and that always loads when I fire the game up because by default when a game fires up that ROM looks for another file with exactly the same name but .srm at the end and that includes all of the save data in the file. So Super Mario World will have those three different saves. You've got the option when you're playing Zelda to choose, do you want to save and quit, save and continue. It's those in-game internal save options that you would have with the original hardware that this, um, this is dealt with. And if I was to do another lap now, um, it would log it here. When I quit out, it would save it back to the card. And then when I load the game again, it would, um, it would run as normal. So there's not a lot you have to do to make the in-game options work. They will just, um, they will just get loaded. And there's not a lot more you need to know about that really. It just uh, runs as normal. If I start this just as a demonstration, it would go um, at the end of the lap time, at the end of this sort of section, it would automatically save. So some games like S0 don't prompt you for a save slot, it just saves your lap times as you go along and you can know that when you quit the game at the end it will already wipe that S you know, .srm file back and there's nothing more to do. So now if we have a look at the directory structure it's a bit more clear, it'll be a bit more clear exactly what gets written back and what. 
Okay, now to see the file structure and how RetroPy or RetroArch save those .srm files, it's probably easier to show it in a graphical interface. And if I connect here with the IP of my Raspberry, username pi, password Raspberry, connect there. And so when it connects, it should go straight to the home directory pi. In the pi directory, you want to go to RetroPy, and there you go to ROMs, and because it was F0, it would be in the SNES folder. And here we've got the files listed. Now if I scroll to the bottom to sort by date, the most recent ones there, I've got um, here the .srm file, which is um, written at the time it, it uh, quit, the, quit the game. So it's a pretty small file, it's only 2k. That is the .srm. You see it's the same name as the ROM, except with .srm added at the bottom. And by default, when RetroPy or RetroArch load the F0 game at a check for a .srm file, that gets loaded and that stores all of the in-game saves, so your lap times if it's F0, or your save, st uh, save games within Zelda, like the three, three or four slots you get. And, and that's pretty much it. So as long as you see SRM files appearing in this folder here, home, pi, retro pi, ROMs, and then whichever system you're emulating, you know that they're getting written correctly and loaded. And as I said earlier, there's not really an option to stop it automatically loading an SRM because inherently that's what the game should be doing. Uh, and last thing we can do is quickly look at the CFG file, the RetroArch config file, and you can see a couple of references to how SRMs are dealt with. So if I go up a directory to the OPT directory, there's a separate video on all the config files and locations, so if you want to know where files are, it's worth checking that one out. Uh, OPT, RetroPy, configs, and all. So you can see here, there's the full directory, OPT, RetroPy, configs, all. And the file I want to read is this retroarch.cfg. If I right mouse on that and hit view edit, it's just going to download that and open it up. And just shrink that down a bit. Okay, so within here, there are two sections worth looking at for the SRM. One is this um, section right at the top, so save all files SRM. By default, the directory is the one that is running the ROMs from, which um, was that, if I go down here, um, you can see that it was previously home, pi, retro pi, ROMs, and whichever system. So by default, it would be in the same folder and you can just list it out and that's fine you can keep them in there or if you wanted to be specific you can put the path in here and it will save those SRMs to another file or folder. Now I haven't tried it but you could probably copy one of these SRMs send them to someone else with the RetroPie they could load it and they can see your time so they might be exchangeable I'm not sure I've not tried it but I imagine they are. Um, so that's one option you can do with the save file directory um, the SRM files change where they're saved and the other option in, in this file is how they're um, saved. As I mentioned before, RetroArch will automatically write that SRM and update it to the SD card when you quit out of RetroArch, so it does that anyway. But let's say you've got problems cleanly quitting RetroArch or you want to make sure that it's written more often. This option here, autosave underscore interval, that's used by RetroArch to say how often it should save that SRM file. So I've got zero, which means it doesn't automatically save it. But say you put something like five in there, that would be five seconds. So every time the game saves or updates in its own memory, the, um, the game data or the save file, five seconds after that, it would write back that SRM file to the, to the SD card. So you've got a copy at that point. You don't have to wait until you quit. So it's just another option you can use to make sure you're getting that save data in there. And that's pretty much all you need to know to load and save um, the game's save data within the game itself. And the second video will show how to do that if, for example, the game doesn't have an inbuilt save facility or you want a bit more regular saves to be possible.